The life of everyone on board depends upon just one thing. Finding someone back there who can not only fly this plane, but who didn't have fish for dinner. Is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? <laughs> Well, chances are you probably won't actually need to know how to pilot a commercial airliner, but you know what you might need to do someday? You might need to drive a car with a manual transmission. Now, I think uh, being able to drive a car with a manual transmission, a stick shift vehicle, is not only useful in a pinch if it's the only car available, but it's also a great skill to know. In fact, uh, if you end up buying a car with a manual transmission, you'll find that you have a lot more control over the vehicle. You can drive in a lot more uh, dynamic type of situation. You can change your driving strategy, and generally you can make a lot more use out of the vehicle as well. So I think being able to drive sticks a good, uh, a good thing to know, a good life skill. And uh, on today's video, I'm gonna hopefully show you how to uh, properly operate one and how to prolong the life of the vehicle as well as maximize your uh, driving performance along the way. Now today, we're gonna to be using a 2012 Jeep Wrangler. This has a six-speed transmission. It's a four-door vehicle that you might find commonly uh, in an off-road application. And uh, hopefully, you'll be able to extrapolate knowledge from this vehicle to any manual transmission vehicle available. So let's get behind the wheel and let's do some driving. When you first get behind the wheel of a manual transmission vehicle, you're going to notice that the shift knob has considerably more degrees of freedom and degrees of motion than the shifting lever you'll find uh, on an automatic transmission. This is because, as I mentioned in the first video, you actually are controlling individual shift linkages and shift forks with each vertical position. So with the first vertical position, you can go from your first gear to the second gear. Then you can go over to the next shift fork, which controls third gear and fourth gear. Then you go to the next shift fork, which controls fifth gear, and in this case, sixth gear. And if you press with some force and move it over, you can engage reverse. Now, the reason you have to apply pressure to get into reverse is a safety feature, or rather a transmission pres uh, preservation feature, to protect against accidentally shifting into reverse when you're uh, at speed thinking you're going to sixth gear. So that's uh, how the shift knob works. You'll also notice this handle here. This is the emergency brake or parking brake. Since there's no park feature on a manual transmission, although you can, and I do recommend, leaving it in gear when you're not using the car, there's also an additional brake or handbrake which allows you to apply usually the rear wheel brakes using a mechanical cable rather than the hydraulic braking system used normally. So it's always important to remember to release this before you start driving because otherwise if your car doesn't uh, indicate that it's engaged, you'll burn off your brake material and wear out your engine and clutch much faster. So these are the controls up here. You may also notice this additional knob in the, in the side here. This is the transfer case control knob, and uh, it's present because this is a four-wheel drive vehicle. I'm not going to go into how to use the transfer case because for most applications on road, you're not going to need to use it, and a lot of vehicles don't even have this control. So next I'll show you what uh, differences there are with the pedals. In a vehicle with an automatic transmission, you'll normally just notice two pedals below the, uh, below the dashboard. You'll have the gas pedal and usually a larger surface area brake pedal. But you'll notice, what you'll notice in a manual transmission is there's an additional pedal here. This is the clutch pedal, and this is the pedal that you're going to use to engage and disengage the engine. Now, as you recall in my first video on how to drive, or my first video on how manual transmissions work, I described how the clutch it provides a linear transition between a fully engaged engine, which is what you have when your foot is off the pedal, to a fully disengaged engine, which is what you have when your foot is fully depressed on the pedal. So varying the level of compression on this pedal adjusts how much you engage the engine during a shift or during uh, normal driving conditions. The gas and the brake are exactly the same. This is the gas pedal, this is the brake pedal, just like on a, an automatic transmission. Now one key difference that a lot of people are kind of surprised by who have driven automatic for a long time is when you take your foot off the brake and the engine is running, nothing happens provided either the clutch is engaged or the transmission is in neutral. This is, uh, this is kind of an interesting effect because most people expect the car to start moving as soon as the brake is released. In a, in a manual transmission, however, it's slightly more complicated because you actually have to ease off the clutch to provide a smooth transition from, stopped, uh, from the stopped vehicle into the vehicle's motion. Otherwise, you'll quickly stall out the engine or 
uh, have an, a not very smooth transition from a stationary parked position into a moving uh, configuration. So now I've shown you all the unique features of the manual transmission control system. The remainder of the controls are equivalent to that of, the, of an automatic transmission vehicle, so I haven't really gone into any detail on them. So next I'm going to show you the procedure I take for driving a manual transmission vehicle, starting from the very beginning and I'll take you through the, how I get it started and how I get it moving as well as how to shift. So the first thing you want to do once you get into your vehicle is uh, put your seatbelt on for safety. So the first thing I do is I apply my foot to the brake pedal and I also put the clutch all the way down. So now the engine is disengaged from the drivetrain. Make sure the parking brake is off and I put the shift knob into first gear to prepare for driving. The next thing you can do is insert the uh, keys and start the engine. Once your engine is running, as you can see here, now what you can do, since your gear shift is in first gear, is uh, proceed with the actual engine engagement. You take your foot off the brake. Now as you'll notice, we're not moving at all. The vehicle remains stationary, as you can see on the speed control. Here's what you want to do. You want to gradually lift your foot off the clutch and simultaneously apply the gas. And as you can see, the vehicle is now moving. Now this usually takes you quite a few attempts on the first go. I know it took me about probably 10 or 15 to actually get it uh, to where I could do this very smoothly. So don't worry too much if you stall the engine the first couple of times. Pretty much everybody does. So here's a, I'm going to give you a bird's eye view, or rather a driver's view, of the RPM and speedometer gauges as I do this same procedure. This will allow you to keep track of the RPM while, uh, while I'm accelerating to show you what, uh, what you want to look for during an, accel uh, during an initial uh, acceleration from zero. So now I'm going to start releasing the clutch. The RPM drops very slightly, and I'm going to push the gas just enough to get the vehicle moving. That is by far the hardest part of driving stick right there. So I'll bring the vehicle to a stop and we'll try that again. Gradual application of throttle, pull off clutch, vehicle's moving. And I'll give you another view of the pedals while I do this as well. Take your foot off the brake, gradual application of throttle, pull off the clutch. And you can take your foot completely off the clutch pedal if you want to. Now it's very important when driving that you never ride the clutch. Now what do I mean by riding the clutch? Well, as I mentioned, the clutch is a linear device. It is, doesn't just operate in fully engaged and fully disengaged. It also has a linear region in the middle. Now if you uh, are driving at speed and you're not shifting gears, but you have the clutch at this position, what you're doing is you're slipping the clutch continuously. This results in friction and generates enormous amounts of heat in the clutch and also continuously wears off clutch material. So you always want to make sure that unless you're shifting gears, your clutch is either fully engaged or fully disengaged. When you're driving, it's going to be uh, fully disengaged like this, meaning that the engine is connected to the transmission and there's no slippage of the clutch. And when you're uh, not driving, if you want to have the clutch in, you uh, put the pedal down and this completely disengages the engine with no uh, rubbing of the clutch plate against the flywheel. Now if you're sitting there idling at a stoplight and your transmission is in gear, your first instinct will just be to hold the clutch down to the floor for as long as, uh, as it takes to wait for the light. This actually is not ideal because it wears out the throwout bearing. That's the part of the, uh, of the drivetrain that holds the clutch plate in place under pressure when you're applying the uh, pressure to the clutch. So this bearing is being uh, subjected to over 100 pounds of force by the lever action of the clutch in order to keep the clutch plate separated from the flywheel. A better technique is to, hold, is to put the transmission in neutral. So that is the position wherein no shift fork is selected and no gear is selected. This allows you to subsequently take your foot off the clutch 
and continue to idle without going anywhere. As you can see, the vehicle is not moving even though my foot is off the clutch. Keeping the transmission in neutral is a good idea, but as I said, never allow it to be a life safety uh, hazard. Always be prepared to put it right back into gear and continue driving. And if you feel more comfortable as a beginner at keeping the uh, clutch in and just keeping it in first, for the when you're first beginning to learn how to drive stick, that can be a good option as well, just for safety. So what do you do if you want to shift gears? To demonstrate this, I'm going to start out in first gear and I'm going to start driving. So now we're rolling around in first gear. Now, as I mentioned in my first video, the purpose of shifting gears in a manual transmission vehicle is so that uh, you can change the ratio between the engine and the drivetrain so that uh, you can get maximum performance out of the system. So uh, when do you want to shift gears? Well, this depends fundamentally on whether you're trying to drive for performance or trying to drive for economy. If you're trying to drive for economy on most vehicles, you're going to want to shift between 2000 and 2500 RPM. Now right now I'm below 2000 RPM because I'm just slowly going around this parking lot. However, if I accelerate, now you hear I've gone above 2000 RPM. This is about 2500. So in order to make a shift happen, what you want to do is apply the clutch, pull your gear shift down to the next gear, now it's in second, and gradually release your clutch. This was your first, uh, your first shift from first to second gear. So now the engine's running at about 1100 RPM, and uh, it's a bit, uh, it feels a little bit too low in RPM because I'm trying to drive fairly slowly. You always want to make sure you're not over uh, torquing the engine or lugging the engine. If you ever hear your engine kind of struggling to keep up, or if pressing the gas pedal down does nothing, it means you're in a gear that's too high, and this can actually wear out the engine by uh, putting excessive load on the bearings. So you want to keep the engine running fast enough that you're not hearing that lugging sound. And you also want to always make sure that uh, you're not over revving the engine in a low gear because this is inefficient. If you want to drive for performance, it's not necessarily bad for the system to go at a little bit higher RPM. If you're looking for a lot of performance, you might shift at 3000 or on a lot of higher performance engines, maybe even 4000. Now this burns a lot more fuel and is less efficient, but at the same time it gives you considerably more horsepower at the wheels. So uh, that is a, a trade-off that you want to take into consideration. Now if you are revving at a higher RPM, you want to make sure you never exceed anywhere near this red line on your tachometer. This red line indicates that damage is being done to the engine. So if you're, if you're revving so high that you're anywhere close to that, you're significantly shortening the lifespan of your engine. Since this one redlines at just under 6,500 RPM, I would consider 5,500 to be the maximum safe RPM you'd ever want to let this engine run to. And even if you're driving anywhere near that, for best engine life, you really would be better off shifting around 4,500. You don't want to get close to the red line because you are doing damage over time, and if you exceed the red line, you can do immediate damage to the engine. You could even throw a rod or uh, have, a, have a piston come apart or, or blow a ring. There's a whole number of things that could go wrong if you rev that high. So be sure and keep the RPMs reasonable. Uh, if you're shifting for uh, economy, this uh, gauge has a recommended range for your RPM. That's the green line there. And uh, of course, you can always shift higher if you're going for horsepower, but keep in mind to stay away from the red zone. Now, lugging the engine is not the only reason you may want to downshift from a higher gear to a lower gear. Anytime you want to increase the speed of the engine relative to the speed of the vehicle, you may want to perform a downshift. Other reasons to do this actually include if you, anytime you need more horsepower, or if you're decreasing in speed, for example, if you're slowing down to a stoplight. Now, to use the example of needing more horsepower, if you're out on the freeway and uh, you're basically trying to pass someone or trying to accelerate and your throttle is wide open and nothing's happening, it may mean that your uh, horsepower at that RPM is at its maximum limit. To gain more horsepower, provided you're not in the red zone of the, of the tachometer, or anywhere near the red zone, I should mention, because downshifting will increase the RPM substantially, what you can do is shift to a lower gear. Now, when you shift to a lower gear, all you have to do is apply the clutch, 
shift down and then slowly release the clutch to get it in uh, to get it in gear. This will increase the RPM of the engine and it will allow you to go uh, get more horsepower out of it. Now this can present a real hazard uh, for inexperienced drivers going at high speeds. If you miss the shift or if you shift down and your RPM is already very close to the red zone, you're at, uh, the downshift is going to force the engine into the red zone. Now on a lot of cars, you might say, well, my car has a rev limiter. It, it's, and its computer might shut it off at 6,000 RPM so you don't, uh, you don't over rev the engine. Well, the problem with downshifting is the power is no longer coming from the engine. The power is now coming from the momentum of the vehicle. So if you downshift and uh, over rev the engine, there's nothing the computer can do to prevent that and it will do damage. So always make sure that you're, you know what gear you're going into Make sure you don't accidentally go from a high gear into a very low gear. You, generally speaking, only want to downshift one gear at a time, unless you're at a complete stop, in which case you can always go to first gear. So if you were in fifth gear, and you accidentally downshifted all the way into second gear at speed, if you took your foot off the clutch, you would very likely do damage to the engine if you were going uh, at a considerable speed. So it's always best to be careful that you never miss a shift. Now one thing you may notice during a shift is sometimes if you're coming down from a high gear into a lower gear, you may notice that it may not initially want to go into that gear. It may present resistance to it. If you feel that resistance, it's very important to not apply excessive force because what you're doing, if you remember how the synchronizers worked where the shift fork presses the slide gear against the synchronizer, uh, what, you, what you're actually doing is you're forcing the synchronizer to burn off all that excess momentum in the transmission as heat. Now this can occur any time a very, very high speed differential between the uh, previous gear and the lower gear is present. And uh, this can wear out the synchronizers very quickly. So there is actually a technique for overcoming this. Uh, what you can do is if you feel that resistance and it doesn't want to go in gear, you can first off pr stop trying to apply the gear, momentarily let your foot off the clutch and put it back in again. Now what this does is it matches the speed of the engine to the speed of the transmission. This technique is called double clutching. That would make it considerably easier to put into that gear and it also will save the life of your synchro. Now obviously if you are in a hazardous situation where life safety is, uh, is a factor and you have to get it in that gear, just go ahead and get it in the gear. It doesn't matter if you burn some synchro material there. But if you are driving in a safe, uh, in a safe condition and you want to prolong the life of your uh, transmission, the double clutch technique during downshifts, like so, can actually help make the shifts a lot smoother. Now it's important not to mistake double clutching for shifting without applying the clutch. While some high-skilled uh, high drivers and drivers who are uh, driving race cars or very high-performance cars may choose to shift from one gear to the next without applying the clutch, this is actually not good practice for the prolonging the life of your transmission. If you match the speeds of the engine and the transmission very carefully, you can make the shift successfully. However, it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to match those speeds without applying your clutch and any small amount of time that it saves or lifespan of the clutch that it may save will be more than lost by the damage it will do to your synchros during all the times where you don't quite get it right. Trying to make the synchros do the work of the clutch effectively makes it so that the synchros aren't just trying to match the RPM of the counter shaft, they're also trying to match the RPM of the entire engine and that results in considerably more heating and considerably more wear to the synchronizers. Now one technique that isn't explicitly recommended but can be effective is if you're at speed and, you're, uh, and there's no power being transferred from the engine into the drivetrain, you can actually take the system out of gear, you can take the transmission out of gear without actually putting in the clutch. Now what you want to do is you want to give it a slight bit of acceleration and then just as you're taking your foot off the gas, do that. It's out of gear now, I didn't apply the clutch, and there was no damage to the transmission because there, you didn't hear any grinding or clunking. Now if you try to do that and it presents resistance, or if you hear a thud or a clunk or a grind after you pull it out, 
it means you're doing minor damage to the gears of the transmission, and this is not ideal. So mastering that trick takes some practice, and I don't recommend using it if you're a beginner and if you haven't uh, practiced considerably. Now the last topic I want to go over today is engine braking. Now on an automatic transmission, there, are, there is a facility for the vehicle to downshift and change its uh, speed, but for the most part, braking is performed using the uh, brake pedal. On a manual transmission, one of the great things is it allows you to actually use the engine as a method of braking. For example, if I accelerate this in first gear, and I bring it up, and I shift it into second gear, I'm going at about 10 miles an hour, but if I shift back down to first gear, see how much speed I just burned off by downshifting? That's called engine braking. And effectively what I just did was I used the compression of the cylinders of the engine as well as the friction within the bearings in the engine to force power off of the vehicle and uh, to slow down the vehicle. So this is a technique you can use and to, uh, to accomplish it all you have to do is downshift. So like I was doing before I was in second gear all I did was downshift it to first gear and eased off the clutch and by doing that, I was able to decrease the vehicle's speed without touching the brake at all. Now, just as a safety precaution, I should note that uh, when engine braking, you, uh, your brake lights will not turn on. So don't use engine braking as the primary method for slowing down your vehicle because the people behind you won't be able to see that you're slowing, uh, that you're slowing down. Additionally, doing it too often can wear out your clutch. So don't use it when you're driving around town. Where engine braking can be very useful, however, is when you're driving on the highway, especially where there are hills. If you're driving down a mountainside and uh, you don't want to wear out your brakes or cause brake fade, engine braking can be an extremely useful tool to keeping the car at a reasonable speed without, uh, without putting too much stress on your brake pads. Well, hopefully in today's episode, you learned quite a bit about driving manual transmission. It's a useful skill to have. It's something that uh, might get you out of a sticky situation if that's the only car that's available. And uh, hopefully you'll see now that there are a lot of dynamic driving techniques you can use that make it much easier to control the vehicle and give you a lot more control over your power versus efficiency balance on the vehicle. So hopefully you learned something about uh, manual transmissions in general today. Thanks for watching Dielectric videos. I will see you next time.